Welcome back to Cowlitz River Restoration. This is Sarah, and I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how I refinished this awesome wooden filing cabinet for a client of mine. So first off, we started off by taking it apart, and then I'm gonna sand the top and the front of the drawers with a 120 grit sandpaper. I wanted something a little more aggressive to break down that top finish. This piece is so cool in the fact that it is so sturdy and completely wood. So I sanded the top with the 120 and then I'm also going to sand just the drawer faces with that 120 grit as well. Again, just to break down that top seal and finish. Once I'm done going over the entire thing with the 120 and I've gone through that layer of finish and seal, I went over the whole thing again with a 220 grit sandpaper to buff it out and make sure that it was nice and smooth and soft and ready for stain. Of course, after I sand it, I've got to wipe it all down, get all the debris off of it so that it's completely prepped and ready for me to apply product. I used a poly stain in a Kona brown. It's a really thick stain. It goes on really thick and it's got a lot of coverage and I needed that because the stain that I wanted to use just didn't darken it up enough. So I went over it with that poly stain and I did two coats of this. You want to use a brush. I really like to use the pour and wipe method when I'm using regular stains, but with polystain, it's so thick, you wanna use a brush and always go in the direction of the wood grain. I gave myself 24 hours between the two coats to make sure that it was good and sealed or good and dry before I went on to my next coat. I also went ahead and made sure that it was completely dry before I black wash because I'm gonna black wash the top of this and the front of these drawers just to give it a little extra dimension. So once I put the second coat on, gave it 24 hours, I sanded the top and the drawer faces with a 220 grit, just lightly, just enough to get out any uh, imperfections and to make sure that it was really nice and smooth and ready for my black washing. When I of course, after I sanded it, I need to wipe it all down and get the debris off. But when I black washed it, I used a latex flat black paint by Rust-Oleum. I did very light brushing on the top and then I used a wet rag to wipe it and kind of smear those colors together. When I do any kind of color washing, I just dip the tip of my paintbrush into the paint and then I wipe it off like it's dry brushing so it's not really wet you don't want a lot of product on your brush and then I just lightly brush it back and forth across my piece and then I use a wet rag or sometimes even a dry rag just to smear it and kind of marry those colors together once I had completely dried and it dries pretty fast when you're doing dry brushing because you're not using a lot of product I used a polyurethane to seal the top and the drawer faces. You always wanna work in the same direction as the wood grain. Same as when you're dry brushing, work in the same direction as the wood grain. This is a satin finish polyurethane, so it's gonna have a little bit of a shine to it, and I was totally okay with that. I typically favor a matte finish, but because of this style and what I had, I'm really pleased that I used the satin finish. I think it really went with the piece well. Once I allowed this to dry, I gave it a good 24 hours. I actually did a second coat of poly to make sure that it was good and sealed. And I wanted it to be nice and strong and durable. Once I had the drawer faces and the top completely done, the color that I'm using right now is called Chocolate Swirl by Bear. Uh, Bear offers chalk paints that you can have mixed for you at the paint counter at Home Depot. And I'm really 
a big fan of this paint. I've had a few different colors mixed for me by Home Depot and I really like this color. Sometimes the colors are not always 100% true to color, but this one turned out excellent. So I'm gonna be honest and say sometimes it's a little bit of a gamble because I've had colors mixed there before and they haven't always been the exact hue that I was looking for, but this one was perfect. Again, Chocolate Swirl by Bare Chalk Paint. I can say that I've always really liked the finish of the Bare Chalk Paint and I like the durability of it. I like the fact that I don't have to put a ton of coats on. I feel like the coverage is really good, the consistency is really good, and it's fairly easy to work with. And I like that it's easy to get a hold of. It's just a convenient, nice paint for me to use. I'm really happy with it and the price point is good. I did two coats of this paint on the base and then also I cut in around the edges or around the trim of the drawer faces. I'm just using a regular angle brush that you could pick up at any hardware store that's usually labeled for trim or cutting in. I used bare finishing wax to seal the base and around the drawer faces, anywhere where I painted, anywhere where I put that chocolate swirl, I used a clear bare finishing wax to seal that up. I like the bare finishing wax. I feel like it's easy to work with and I feel like I've gotten really good durability with it with other pieces. So that's my consumer's report on bare finishing wax. I'm a fan. The brush that I'm using is a wax brush that I picked up off of Amazon.com. It came in a little two pack with a small brush and this awesome wax brush. I'm a big fan of this wax brush. I like the way that I have control over it. I like the bristles. I like the coverage and I like the price point. When this one wears out, I'll just buy myself another one. This larger wax brush was a little too big to go around the drawer, so I used a smaller wax brush to go over the chocolate swirl around the drawer faces because I kind of created a little frame around it. So I used that smaller brush just to give me a little more control so that I wasn't overlapping onto the front too much because the front is a much more satin finish whereas the wax is satiny but it's not the same shine. So once I had done my clear wax I used Annie Sloan's black wax to create a little more definition, to create some more visual interest, so that it wasn't just one flat chocolate swirl. I wanted it to kind of have texture. So I went over it around the front where there's a lot of those different details. I went over the front with the black wax, just with my wiping, with my brush, wiping it on and then wiping it off with my rag so brushing it on and wiping it off with my rag and then kind of freehanding around the sides to kind of give it almost a shadow box feel and then trying to match that on the other side when i'm working with my waxes i use a variety of techniques sometimes i'll kind of wipe sometimes i'll kind of do a swirl and then a wipe it's just kind of playing with it to get that texture or that look that you want. I feel like there's not really any rules. You get to be in charge. You get to choose what looks good to you and just play with that wax and move it around until it looks right. Uh, I have gone overboard with wax before and had to like sand it off and try again and that's okay. Like I feel like that's how we perfect our craft is by going for it. Get in there, make mistakes, try new things, and learn what works and learn what doesn't, and then just keep failing forward. I have heard that you can use mineral spirits to remove wax. I've never tried it, but maybe someday. I did use two different waxing brushes when I was using my black wax to create the 
look that I did. I used a smaller one on the drawers, but then I also used one that was more of like a flat wax brush that I picked up at Home Depot and used that for my shadow boxing on the sides of the cabinet. And this is how it turned out. I'm so happy that I stepped out of my comfort zone and tried something new. The client loves it. I can't wait for her to have it. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope that you'll like and subscribe. Thanks for coming and I'll see you next time. Bye.